Hello, good afternoon. It's uh, Deal Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for the uh, Monday's close, 7th of March 2016. This video is being brought to you by CFDS.com. Please visit the website www.cfds.com and certainly open up a trading account and certainly uh, qualify for that generous uh, bonus offer for all new trading accounts. Okay, there is the alternative, which is the educational site as well, which is www.cfds.education to certainly learn more. Okay, I post my charts and analysis on there regularly. Now, let's see exactly um, how these markets have closed. European markets uh, certainly closed in the negative. You have the FTSE closing at 6.182, minus 17, minus 0.3%. DAX down 0.5% and the CAC down 0.3%. So overall net net negative. And that's in the back of China, given the fact that Asian markets certainly closed down overall flat stroke negative. The Nikkei was negative, the Hang Seng negative, and the uh, Shanghai managed to muster a 0.8% gain. That's after the uh, National uh, People's Congress, uh, basically um, the annual Congress that they, say they, they certainly have, basically declared a 3% uh, uh, fiscal uh, stimulus as opposed to... Uh, something higher that was expected by the market and that obviously uh, uh, put a negative slant on the market. Now we also have had, had uh, weaker data, we had weaker factory orders out of Germany, uh, we also had uh, Centix investor confidence certainly coming out negative as well, labour market conditions out of the US certainly came out negative as well, so there were several reasons for the risk off tone. Okay, we also had concerns with regards to North Korea because there was a threat overnight uh, to the US and the South Koreans. A potential nuclear threat okay the fiscal stimulus obviously falling below expectations euro usd is back uh, above that 1.10 level uh, bonds are certainly starting to uh, fall the yields are starting to rise so there's certainly doubts with regards to potential uh, draghi's uh water pistol part two okay that's what i like to call it because uh, he uh, he basically threatened to fire a bazooka with regards to qa he fired and he ended up firing a water pistol last time the stock market started to sell off Okay, now we had weaker data out of Australia overnight as well, okay, uh, and Chinese growth rate obviously was lowered. We had the warning from the BIS with regards to negative rates, okay, and Mr. Corolla certainly had several anti-QE comments uh, with regards to any further easing, dashing hopes there. So there was a barrage of negative data. In terms of the stronger data, I mean, you had obviously bullish news, you had uh, China, obviously stronger, and uh, iron ore. Uh, rally uh, very very impressive and we want the oil rally as well late into the session okay now let's try and decide for exactly how this market is moving okay now that we've discussed the fundamentals let's look at the technicals okay so we certainly bounced off this uh, zone here at uh, 2897 we bounced quite strongly back into that 3020 zone and we certainly seem to have created a potential h and s formation so you can clearly see that now on the 60 minute chart <clears throat> it's interesting how this formation is formed going into Draghi, that's not exactly a positive sign, is it, folks, okay? So it basically means that the market's already uh, ba uh, baked in the uh, potential Draghi uh, QE. It's already baked into the market to a large extent. And given the fact that we are creating this right shoulder as we speak, you can see that the 60-minute chart has held that topping tail. Our resistance, the key resistance being 3.055, okay? You've got the daily chart obviously holding into resistance as well. You have an unfilled gap left below which certainly acts as a potential magnet to drag price action down, okay? Now, the 10-minute chart, like I said, is currently hitting resistance at 3020 and looking to potentially move lower, okay? That's the uh, state of the euro stocks with the H&S formation on the 60-minute chart. So watch out for that H&S formation. Uh, let me just project the downside potential uh, in terms of this H&S. So uh, H&S equals 3055 minus the neckline. Uh, the neckline being at uh, 30, well, 2995, uh, which equals you have a 50 point drop, uh, well, 50, 60 point drop, okay. Uh, you're looking at 2935, okay. So that's basically what you're looking for, okay. So 2935, and then you have a potential trial at 2950 and 2935. That's the zone that you're looking for on the downside with regards to the uh, potential uh, h &S formation on the uh, euro stops. Okay, now let's just go over to the S&P 350 European. Clearly see that the daily chart is holding resistance. That's why I have a bearish bias. Also stock 600 if I go over to the daily chart. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so you have a horizontal resistance doji indicating a move lower. So therefore risk off there as well. Okay, 
Right, uh, moving on to the German DAX now. Let's just bring up the German DAX. First of all, daily chart. Let's see how the daily chart uh, uh, performed. The daily chart certainly putting in a doji at that resistance zone, so certainly indicating negative bearish price action, especially given the fact that the factory orders were certainly weak. Okay, now if I just look at this formation here, you have the same type of formation on the euro stocks, and you can certainly see that that certainly is in concert with the euro moving higher. Okay, and you have this HS formation. So you're looking at a potential downside target of 9500 region on the German DAX. Now, whilst we're on here, let's just bring up the chart of the Euro USD because the Euro USD chart is very, very important. Now, if I go to the daily chart, the Euro USD, you can see that we've broken the downtrend and we're looking to potentially thrust higher. The, the uptrend certainly seems to be capped at 1.1050 zone, but the next level potentially is 1.1090. Okay, on the Euro USD. Now again, we can cross verify that with the uh, the dollar chart as well. Let's just bring up the dollar itself, FXCM dollar. Dollar is certainly potentially holding. Now if the dollar starts to break here, a uh, lower. Okay, then you are looking at the euro breaking higher, and um, that obviously will uh, trigger off a yeah, risk off or risk aversion move. Okay, so again, all eyes on that potential level on the Euro USD. Okay, given the fact that wage growth obviously was too intepid. Uh, labor market conditions today certainly weak as well certainly does have the uh, argument for the rally there okay uh, now let's just bring up the chart the usd jpy usd jpy is back now languishing at the potential support zone especially given the fact that mr corolla uh, basically uh, uh, brushed aside any potential uh, qe at present or any further qe so therefore you are looking at a potential negative um, for the usd jpy okay so you're looking at the yen starting to appreciate and the USD JPY starting to fall, especially with weaker labor market conditions and obviously with tepid wage growth on Friday. And that's not exactly bullish for the market, folks. Remember that the USD JPY has to move higher in order for equity markets to move uh, higher as well, okay, i.e. yen starting to fall. Right, okay, let's go back to the German DAX. So h &S formation, as we can see here, and you're looking at this uh, potential support zone to be t tapped at 9580 on the downside. So keep, certainly keep an eye out there. 10 minute chart of the German DAX. If we do push higher, then you do have this gap fill that's going to act as potential resistance. Uh, we certainly did, um, uh, obviously, um, fail, well, certainly fail to even potentially get anywhere near that today. So uh, it's very hard for me to envisage that we're going to see that unless the US markets certainly start to uh, improve and start to uh, put in a strong showing. Okay. Uh, but from my perspective, I don't see that being hit or I don't see that being touched. And therefore, I am looking for a weaker move lower, okay, on the German DAX as well. Okay, you have multiple resistance zones in this area at 9800, and therefore looking for a potential thrust lower. Okay, now bring up the uh, chart of the French CAC as uh, is an important index. Okay, the 10 minute chart, you can see that we are now into potential resistance. We certainly broke out this downtrend today and the, towards the last half of the session, the last part of the session, and you are looking at potential resistance for now. 10 minute chart, same type of formation, you are looking at HS. So, this is your uh, right shoulder as we speak, and looking to potentially move lower given the topping tail has held that gap fill of resistance. Okay, you can clearly see that gap has closed, and the market certainly is, uh, has basically come to a standstill. Okay, daily chart of the French CAC is obviously into resistance, into that gap fill key level. Previous support equals resistance, and therefore you're looking for a potential thrust and a move lower on the French CAC, looking to potentially test the lower channel. Okay, right, FTSE 100. Now, again, this is dictated by oil, as we all know. Oil prices at the moment, very, very impressive, very, very stellar, surprising a lot of us. Okay, at this current juncture, if I go over to the daily chart, you can see that we're breaking out. The next potential key resistance is going to be 38.8. You do have a chest formation of 40.3. Whether or not that is obviously has the ability to be hit is certainly comes into question. But again, let the market decide. I mean, it's the pattern is certainly there. The dollar certainly is weakening and uh, certainly is helping the price of oil. Is the demand there for oil? No, it's not. Okay, especially with Chinese fiscal stimulus not as anywhere near what everybody expected, and that's why we've had this risk-off move. So it certainly is interesting. I mean, we've had iron ore a rip higher by 19% today as well. Whether and and even then the traders there are puzzled as to why it's ripped higher because the physical demand just isn't there. I mean, it's very very strange. I mean, there was nothing. Uh, exceptionally positive from the uh, the actual uh, uh, China's pledge and their in their national um, obviously uh, uh, committee meeting etc. It certainly is um, very baffling at this moment in time. Okay, so again, uh, whether it's a move with regards to the dollar and inverse trade there, I mean it certainly is uh, certainly is interesting to say the least. Okay, and we shall see uh, as time passes, we shall see how this market reacts. 
Okay, so oil price is certainly looking very, very bullish here. Uh, although we did have the rig count lower on Friday, so that certainly is a, a potential uh, boost. But there's been no economic data that's supporting that. We had weaker factory orders this morning out in Germany. Uh, we've had um, uh, leading economic index out of uh, Japan, certainly slightly weaker as well. Centix investor confidence weaker, labour market conditions weaker, so no actual organic demand or growth that um, will support the price of oil moving higher. So again, that's very baffling and very strange, okay? And hence the reason why this move certainly has caught a lot off guard. There's no real fundamental catalyst that's driving the price of oil. Okay, now going back to the FTSE 100, the daily chart itself, yes, we have an inside bar. You have resistance at this region here at uh, 62220. And that certainly has held. Yes, iron ore certainly did help the FTSE 100 uh, propel higher. Now, the diagonal trend line is held. The horizontal support is held at 6125. We're back into that 6180 zone now. Let's just see exactly how this market reacts. Okay. 10 minute chart, FTSE 100 itself. We had this HS formation. We almost got down to the gap fill at uh, 6120. We, we failed to fill it. And the market's obviously rallied subsequently now. The FTSE 100 resistance will be at 6215. Uh, you also have resistance at this uh, region here at 6200. And that's a zone that we are going to look look towards. From a Fibonacci retracement point of view, you're taking the pivot high to the uh, pivot low. You are into 61%, uh, which is at uh, 6180, and 75% is at 6190. So uh, below 6200 on the FTSE will certainly be a shutting opportunity from my perspective, looking for lower prices. And that's obviously once oil starts to come into resistance, that will be a trade that I'll be taking. Okay, I think that's a wrap in terms of uh, the uh, analysis for European session. Be sure to visit cfts.com for your trading needs and uh, be sure to open up a trading account. Goodbye now.